So here's to you fighter pilots, victors of the war That got us all this real estate that's backed up to the shore And now China's just a word that you read in history Cause I'm the motherfucker who started World War III Greetings folks, and welcome to Command, Chains of War. I'm Eberreg, and this is the Nightmares Scenario. US, Japanese, and South Korean forces had received a devastating blow. The Chinese attack was precise, however, North Korea followed up with a large road strike of its own using a mix of conventional and chemical warheads. In some cases striking bases, but in others the population centers around them. Principal installations across the Pacific have been significantly damaged, aircraft destroyed, and personnel lost. Civilian loss of life was great in both South Korea and Japan, overwhelming emergency services and hospitals. Chinese and North Korean cyber and space forces went into action, causing significant disruption in the U.S. military's ability to see, communicate, and command its forces. By all accounts, the alliance was facing the biggest challenge of its existence. The American public and part of the government were near panic. A day had passed since the missile strikes, which allowed the media's news cycle to flood the television and internet with imagery of burning aircraft, destroyed shelters, and casualties. Punditry and hubris by the American media itself was far more effective at impacting the American psyche and significant efforts by the Chinese intelligence services, cyber warriors, and propagandists. A space and cyber battle had erupted, impacting key infrastructure and maintaining America's high quality of life. The American stock markets had taken a dive soon after their opening bills. The American people were facing the greatest challenge since World War II. International reaction continued to be mixed. Japan and South Korea were quick to declare war against both the PRC and DPRK. NATO quickly met and was debating their Article 5 commitments outside of Europe, with only the United Kingdom currently pledging active support to the United States. Russia announced that it was monitoring the situation closely and wished that all parties conduct restraint in such a vital region to the world's economy. Australia, Singapore, Malaysia, Vietnam, and the Philippines all condemned the attacks and began their own defensive mobilizations. Indonesia collapsed with several different statements being released supporting Ulanbold and there were credible reports of the army in the streets of the capital. The current U.S. President and Congress evacuated Washington once the ballistic missile launches were detected, normally operating from remote underground bunkers and aircraft, while communication systems were under attack would present difficulties. But in this case, it actually helped as the President and Congressional leaders were able to quickly declare war against China and North Korea and get key war fighting mechanisms started without most of the bureaucratic maneuvering that occurs with the normal process. The Pentagon received what it needed to carry out a war with the usual rigor. U.S. military commands are analyzing what had happened and determining the best strategy to remove all Chinese and North Korean threats in the region. The PRC had taken advantage of the U.S. strategy of concentrating all of its forces in a few key bases and launching a large percentage of their conventional missile force that neutralized these bases in the short term and destroyed the USS Ronald Reagan. They had suffered damage in the U.S. Navy's Tomahawk counterattack, but knowing it was coming, they were able to neutralize or absorb the strikes. While exact PRC strategic objectives are unknown, they were clearly attempting to roll back U.S. forces in the region. The DRPK seems to not have acted in coordination, but response to the Chinese attack. Their key targets were South Korean and Japanese population centers in U.S. airbases using conventional warheads, as well as several with chemical weapons, causing panic, chaos, and death. U.S. airbase operations on the peninsula were suspended until the chemical weapon contamination was clear. The assumption was the leadership was taking advantage of the sudden war and these attacks were meant to disrupt both nations prior to a general attack on South Korea. Command's current focus is mobilizing U.S. forces and attacking where possible. The U.S. Navy has begun surging forces worldwide toward the Pacific. Two carriers are moving from the Arabian Sea to link with an amphibious ready group in Australia and moving to the South China Sea. Ships and submarines are surging from the U.S. West Coast and Hawaii. However, no additional carriers will be ready for at least another month. 
U.S. Army and Air Force are mobilizing for a push west. Air expeditionary packages are forming and getting ready to cross the Pacific, and U.S. airport divisions have been recalled. The mobilization of the movement will take time, but the U.S. does have several key global power projection capabilities that can be used to bring the attack to the enemy and disrupt their ability to attack. Many of these forces are already in motion and will turn into the DPRK leadership's final nightmare. Let's do this. I am to destroy numerous DPRK command and control targets in the Pyongyang area in the hopes of eliminating eliminating the DRPK command structure and their ability to impact the greater war. All targets have been marked with target on your tactical map. There are seven C3M hardened bunkers. Six are in the Pyongyang area or just north. One is in the far northwest close to the Chinese border. Three of them are underground hardened mountain facilities that, require, that will require penetrating weapons to destroy. You must level the DPRK intelligence headquarters and DPRK central communications building in Pyongyang. You must destroy the SSBN submarine pan, pan near Nampo. You have six hours to accomplish your task. The principal threat to your air forces is the air defense network of the DPRK. These include surface-to-air missile systems from obsolete single-digit Soviet SAM systems to a few modern KN-06 SAMs, numerous low-level AAA guns, and a small air force of F-5, F-6, MiG-21, MiG-23, and MiG-29 fighters. No active fighter intercept forces, don't really care. Given the obsolescence of the forces, the KPAAF relies heavily on ambush tactics. Combat air patrols are minimal and kept low, while interceptor and SAM battery readiness is kept high. If and when an attack occurs, expect a surge of interceptors, but the DRPK will largely rely on surface-to-air missiles to defend targets. Many systems are obsolete, but they are fielding a copy or original Chinese HQ-9 system in the vicinity of Pyongyang, and at least one long-range SA-5 system seems to be functional. We are at war with China, and their air defense systems do present considerable threats if you choose to overfly their territory to strike the DPRK. There does not appear to be any coordination between the PLAAF and the KPAAF. Expect modern SAM systems, HQ-9 and HQ-16 SAM systems, to be defending key installations, areas, and border areas. Known fighter patrols do consist of modern J-10 and J-11 fighter areas. Assets. I have Strike Group Nightmare with six F-22s, two B-1s, three B-2s, two KC-10 extenders, and two U-2s. South Korea and U.S. communications are significantly disrupted at this point. Japan will be providing AEW support and combat air patrols over the Sea of Japan for the duration of the operation. Let's do this. So first things first, let's unpause and pause to get all the targets, and uh, let's go to the side doctrine. Weapon release optimization, and look at the arrows. Only fire one round at fourth generation fighters, and wait until we're within 35 nautical miles to fire, them, fire our arrows. So let's go to Bulldog Squadron, tell them to activate the radars. And uh, let's define an area here, add new mission, call it fuel supply, it's a support mission, and add all of our extenders to it and turn off the one third rule. So let's bring the B1s with Jazz and the Rs over here. And let's select all the stealth aircraft and bring them here. Here, 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 then here. And uh, let's unpause time, see what happens. Okay, so the F-22's radars are detecting targets on the ground. Let's uh, look at brass area platforms, North Korea facility, and uh, just look at the can of sixes. So it appears that they have five units in each battery, and we know that the North Koreans have four can of six batteries. So we're gonna have to shut them all down. The uh, 
The SA-5s, SA-2s, and SA-3s are not really a threat to our force, but the KN-06s are. Luckily, the B-1s with Jazz are going to be able to handle that. And uh, we have some... And it appears we're just spotting some KN-06s. This one... Okay. Let's uh, look at the line of sight. So we want to route the uh, Jasms right about here. And uh, while we're at it, let's get our uh, Lancers to turn on their jammers. Let's go to Astro 1, route it here and back here to let to attack this guy with six jasms route the jasms here 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 then here and let rip uh, bring the b1 back here Okay, we found another KN-06. Let's look at the line of sight tool. Okay, so I want to strike it for this direction. Allocate six chasms. And route them here, here, then here. Okay, so we found the last KN06. Let's go to it. Check the line of sight tool. So that we want to attack this direction. So allocate six jasms. And uh, let's finally look at this guy with the line of sight tool. Oof. So you want to attack it from this direction, but uh, there are AA guns over there. Okay, let's wipe that. And, uh, Astro 1 is not RTB, not mine, but has a functional jammer. Okay. So a fish bag just took off from Kony. Let's bring Bulldog over here at the loiter speed. Okay, did not need to spend that second Amram third. Uh, 
Bulldog B is firing and hammering at these hammers at these guys. Let's get Bulldog A to go towards these guys. And uh, let's mark this bug as hostile since it took off from uh, North Korean airbase. Let's get Bulldog A to slow down to a pointer. And let's get Bulldog B to move over here to engage these fish beds. And Bulldog C to move over here to, be, to engage these floggers. Okay, let's get Bulldog A to move back. Cruise speed. And let's get Bulldog B to move here. C to move here. Uh, Bulldog A is trying to RTB. Let's not let them. Let's move them here to here. Cruise high altitude. Get Bulldog C to move here. Oh, Bulldog B is trying to RTB. Let's not let them cruise high altitude. Move them over here. Okay. Our guy's taking off. Bulldog A, Bulldog B, Bulldog C. Let's get Bulldog B taking off these guys. This guy. Arkham is hostile. Uh, let's get Bulldog B and move back. Bulldog A and move in. And uh, let's get. Let's get Bulldog A to move over here to engage these guys. Our fish beds. Okay, Bulldog A is firing. Okay, this guy managed to either dodge or survive. Uh, we got these guys moving in. They're floggers. Bulldog A over here. Okay. Yeah. 
mark these guys as hostile. And move Bulldog B in. Okay, move Bulldog B back. And the Jasms are moving in. Bulldog A, this guy. Move Bulldog A over here to engage these fish beds. I think we should move Bulldog B over here to engage these guys. These guys as hostile. It seems this KNO6 is hurting. Let's see what it still has. Uh, okay. It appears that it still has the uh, fire control radar. So we're going to need to engage it. Okay, so this can 06 survived. Let's get Ranger over here and back to allocate 12 Jazzos to it. And, uh,. Bulldog B back. Bulldog A only has one arrow left. Lovely. Okay. Let's move Ranger back to here. Okay, so we're in a bit of a pickle here. Let's get to uh, Ranger 1. Okay, one three left. Fire three at this guy and uh, four at this guy. Okay. Speed up time a bit. Okay. 
Okay, it appears that KN06 has run out of ammunition. And now we wait for these to impact. Okay. Okay, that KN06 is out. Let's get this B2 with mops. This is carrying mops, probably should have mentioned that before. And get it to attack this mountain underground leadership bunker with all of them. Okay, this KN06 is out. So uh, let's get this B1 to to return to base. Get this B1 to, to move in and attack the communications center with two jasms right here, 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 then here. And attack the intelligence HQ with two jasms. Right here, here, then here. And uh, get Dodger to move here, 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 and here. And Philly to move here, 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 and here. Let's look at these guys. Okay. Okay, so let's get Dodger to allocate two deep boots to this guy, and let's get Philly to allocate one deep throat this guy so Yankee is moving in it's gonna drop both the mops and let's move it here here then here while it RTBs Okay, so that thing is down. Let's go to Dodger. Get it to allocate. Yeah, it, it has two deep boats allocated. This thing has one deep boat allocated. And let's get Philly down here and here. And then let's get Dodger to move here. Then let's just get it to move here. And uh, let's get Philly to uh, target this SSBN pen with two deep throats. Let's get Dodger to target this guy with one deep throat. Okay, on forward. Dodger to move here, then here. Target this guy with one deep throat. Move on forward. Okay, so that thing didn't go away. Let's move Dodger here and here. Target this guy with a deep throat. Here and here. is dropping its deep throats. So let's move it here, 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 and here. Okay. 
Dodger has dropped its deep throat, so let's move it here and here. Okay, so the deep throat has a uh, damage potential of about 550. These things, 32,000. Calculations. Thousand five seven seven. That's about sixty points. Okay. So let's get this guy to drop all his deep throats on uh, this bunker. See, this bunker out here is on the list as a target, so uh, we're just going to have to accept that we're not going to hit it. Okay, Dodger is dropping. Let's move it here, here, then here. Let's return to base. And let's get Philly to move here and uh, drop three deep throats. Okay, let's move Philly back here. And I've won, but let's go for the bonus round. See if we can take out these guys. Okay, so we've managed to take them out, and we still got a B1. Jasm's left. So uh, let's get it to attack this thing for whatever it's worth. And get Philly to move here, then here, and attack this thing with two deep throats. Okay, Philly's return to base. Let's get you to move here, 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 then here. Let's get Philly to move here, 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 then here. And while we're at it, let's get Bulldog Squadron on the airspace. Let's move it here, here. Then here. And let's get Bulldog Squadron to return to base. Okay, so uh, I think that's a good place to end it. Nightmares. I didn't lose anything. North Korea lost a lot of shit, including some very important persons. Russia, China, and South Korea didn't get involved in the end of Japan and the US Navy, so okay. So uh, yeah, I think that was a fairly successful result, despite how uh, beholden to RNG I am. I mean, malfunctions can seriously screw up this scenario. So yeah, that's that. This is Everred, signing.